Good evening, I'm Ruben Eko and welcome to My Future. The Zimbabwe International Trade Fair, ZITF 2016, took place in Bulawayo at the end of April this year. And uh, we had the opportunity to spend some time with the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development, who, by the way, took away two awards at the official opening. And uh, what we got to do was spend some time with them and understand the work that they're doing to disseminate the information around their STEM campaign. Now, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa spoke to students as well as uh, teachers and parents at the Scholastica event, which took place at ZITF. And in essence, he tried to educate us all on what it is that STEM is going to achieve, not just in the immediate, but in the long term. So have a listen to what he had to say. My presentation will ba basically venture on the jobs of the future. What is the future, what does the future hold for us as a nation, as part of the world? So scientific illiteracy is the graveyard of industrial growth and future economic development. For as long as we are not well versed in science, we will never be able to drive the economics of a knowledge economy. So everyone, be it in arts, in the humanities, social sciences, and in the pure sciences and applied sciences, we need to have the scientific literacy. I'm quoting these two statements from the Wall Street Journal. They say 25% of all jobs today will disappear within the next 10 years. And 85% of children in year five will enter the workforce where the positions have not yet been designed and the technologies not yet created. This shows us that you can look at any kind of job or occupation that particular job is going to change in the next 10 years. Rapid advances in technology is a threat to many jobs performed by humans. There has been serious change in the thinking of how we should industrialize our economy. And the jobs that we have now being done by men are going to be done by machines. Futurists have predicted that 50% of today's jobs will become redundant in 2025. So our parents, so the students and the parents here, look at the job that you are currently doing now and get to analyze and see how technology is going to make your job redundant. Our institutions of learning should be powerhouses of innovation as they spearhead development of new products that change the world and create employment. Therefore, after having said that, it means our institutions of higher learning must then be innovation hubs. It, they must be able to train people who are futurists, programs, design programs that will allow our people to innovate and be able to be relevant in those circumstances that I'm describing. New careers and professions are being formed as a result of advancement in science and technology. So what does it mean? Do humans then become obsolete? No. Business owners will actively decide whether their next employee should be a person or a machine. There is going to be a choice from the employers, whether they want to employ a person or they want to employ a machine. It therefore means if your skills are not as unique as possible, you are going to be, uh, you are going to compete against a machine. Future industries reside in data management and technological advances. Now there is a STEM, science, engineering, and technology. And mathematics pervades in all those um, aspects. So for you to be an engineer, you need to have mathematics. For you to be a technologist, you need to have mathematics. Any science discipline requires mathematics. So people always think there are certain professions. We always face this problem in institutions of higher learning where they say, I want to do cosmetology, I want to do hairdressing, I want to do uh, this program, but I don't require mathematics. It is a fact that every profession requires mathematics. You will need at one point in time to understand the signs of numbers. And that was Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to My Future, I'm Ruben Eko, and we continue now on our journey during the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair 2016, which took place in Bulawayo at the end of April. And Dr. Godfrey Kandawa was addressing students, parents, and uh, teachers at the Scholastica event, which took place. And he was uh, speaking to a lot of different aspects. And what he was really addressing now in the next segment you'll find, which I find a very controversial and bold statement, is that without STEM, there's no education, uh, in essence. And he also speaks to how courier services in themselves might be phased out because of the direction in which the world is going, where in the near future, about 4 billion people of the world's population will have access to internet. What does that really mean? By 2020, 4 billion people will be connected to the internet. If 4 billion are connected to the internet, it means we will not be needing to talk to people using uh, courier services and so on. So that particular field of courier services, unless I want to send a hard copy of a document, I am going to send my information on the, on, on the network. And by the connection of 4 billion people, it means we need to have skills in data management because now there is vast amount of data that is being transmitted. And 4 trillion opportunity, revenue opportunities, $4 trillion of revenue opportunities will come because of the connection of the internet. 25 plus million applications will be in use. 25 plus billion embedded and intelligent systems will have been developed. Then we will have 50 trillion gigabits of data. That's a vast amount of, of, of data. When we embarked on the A-level STEM initiative, what were we thinking about? We were thinking for a strategic human capital development based on the simple facts that I have given you now. To say, if we don't start to plan now for the next seven to 10 years, then this nation will be doomed. The long-term human capital development strategy will allow us, or we seek to achieve this. We want to retain and attract best STEM talent. So the STEM pioneers, the students that already embarked on the STEM programs, we are then going to start to identify the best talent out of them, the, the best people that will then drive the economies of this country in future. Then we intend to mobilize, we seek to mobilize resources to establish satellite laboratories for excellent young STEM researchers. So we are now in the process of mobilizing resources so that we are able to put laboratories all over the country because we know our infrastructure in certain areas does not allow us to produce the scientists and the STEM graduates that we require. So it is a matter that we assist with so that we are able to uh, avail resources to allow us to have satellite uh, laboratories. We also seek to create science parks and STEM-focused research and development programs that will avail opportunities to attract ambitious and talented students and graduates. We seek to enter into R&D and technology transfer partnerships with the leading local and international institutions. The vision behind the STEM initiative. This is the vision. We want to industrialize Zimbabwe through the knowledge economy. So the strategic human capital development for any industrialized knowledge economy requires these stages. So the government has put up a policy of industrialization. And SADC has actually adopted the same industrialization policy. And we have Zim Asset. These are the policy documents that are guiding us in this vision. Then the ministry's initiative funded by ZIMDEF, the Zimbabwe Main Power Development Fund. What do we want to do? From the A-level, these graduates from A-level will get into university. Which universities must be stigmatized university to produce scientists, stigmatized scientists, engineers, technologists, and so on. We also want to stigmatize the non-science programs like the lawyer, the lawyers, they must be stigmatized. The farmers must be stigmatized. 
The university must produce that so that we have outcomes of the jobs of the future, advanced research and development, new product development, new industries, new economic models for a knowledge economy. For as long as we don't have STEM, we cannot claim that we have education. So we are saying no STEM, no education. If you are not stigmatized, you are not educated. That's the statistics from the STEM initiative in which we have 4,199 uh, students that registered for the STEM initiative. And the figures there show you which province has what number of students. What will your job look like in 20 years? The more of the students that we are training, we are training in the wrong fields. So hence the need to be able to choose a career after you have you know, analyzed the trends, how the trends in that particular field are changing. Future jobs in medicine. While human doctors are not going anywhere in the foreseeable future, lower level staff will be replaced by robots and computers. It's a fact. Doctors will remain but not the same kind of doctor that we have now. There will be a requirement of a special kind of doctor. The presence of robots in operating rooms will only increase in the future. 3D printing will make organ printing a reality. Using a combination of robotic surgery tools, scanning and sensing technologies and high-speed networks, surgeons will operate on people in faraway locations. In the computer field, we have already started doing this. Instead of me going to repair a computer somewhere else, I can instruct a person from here because I'm knowledgeable about them. I can tell them what to do whilst I'm here. And that was Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. We'll be right back. In our third and final segment this evening, Dr. Godfrey Gandawa talks us through, I guess, his conclusions on the STEM vision as a whole and talking about third generation degrees. Jobs in the medical field, these are the current jobs. I'm being futuristic. These are the current jobs now. You have had surgeon, doctors, veterinarian, nutritionist, dietitian, pharmacists, radiologists, medical engineers, nanotechnologists, and nurses. The technologies, these technologies will affect these jobs. Robotics, nanotechnology, that's nanobots, 3D organ printing technology, electronic diagnosis technology, brain computer interface technology. To create what jobs? These will be the jobs of the future. You will have a telesurgeon, genetic counselors, clinical cytogenetists, neuroimplant technicians, nanomedics, end-of-life therapists, body party makers, and brain backup engineers. <laughs> the next generation biomedical scientists, common high school science subjects. What do we have? Mathematics, biology, chemistry, and physics. When you do those subjects, you have an option to do the traditional life sciences first degrees. That's the medicine that we know. I want to do medicine, you know, you got to use it. And I want to be a vet. I want to be a physiotherapist. Then we have what we're calling second generation degree options. You do biostatistics. You see those arrows will guide you, you know, to say if you do mathematics and biology, you can be able to do biostatistics on the second generation programs. Then you can do biochemistry. You can do biophysics, you can do toxicology. I will show you the power of the computer there now. The third generation degree options there, that's where we wish to start to venture now so that we advance further. So that's molecular biology and biotechnology. Our universities have started to offer these degrees. 
pharmacogenetics, toxicogenetics, and pharmacometrics. Then the 2000 technologies there, that's where we started to talk about nanotechnology and genomics and the dynamics of the programs. They will lead us to the fourth generation degree options, where we are saying now we need to be doing nanomedicine, pharmacogenomics, toxicogenomics, and genomic, that's molecular medicine. We are not yet there. We need now to start to train our people, you know, the youngsters, the young talent, to prepare them to be able to take such kind of degrees. Jobs in the media and marketing field. Maintaining privacy, online records, personal image and branding will become key. If it hasn't started to be key. Futurists predict that jobs such as social media manager, online image improvers, private consultants will become more prominent in the next 10 years. It's businesses and individuals will require experts to manage and safeguard their digital information. They are the jobs, the current jobs, there's digital marketing specialists, brand managers, sales people who are sales executives, sales person, and so on. Technology, cloud computing, social media technology advancement will affect these jobs. To give us, those are the jobs of the future. Private consultants, online reputation managers, personal brand managers. You will need managers to manage yourself, to make you a brand. Social media, web history archivists, and social network analysts. Jobs in the legal field. These are the current jobs. You have commercial lawyer, conveyancer, criminal lawyer, public prosecutor, magistrate, judge, and jurisprudence. The technology that is going to affect those jobs is the cloud computing and cyberspace, ransomware, web hacking, phishing, cyberbullying, electronic thefts of data, virtual jurisprudence. The ransomware and um, web hacking and phishing. What are the future jobs? We will have cyber legal advisors, cloud computing lawyers, e-commerce legal practitioners, social network advocates, internet of things advocate, and e-medical arbitrators. This is real. Manufacturing and engineering. 3D printing will lead to fabrication of large objects such as houses, jobs in the engineering field. These are the current jobs. The land surveyors, geologists, civil engineers, electronic engineers, machinists, and drivers. The technologies, robotics and drone technology is going to affect these jobs. And the future jobs are going to be robotics engineers, robotics maintenance technicians, automatic transport system managers, vertical farmers, climate change specialists. We are already saying, you know, we are not receiving sufficient rains. Hey, the climate is changing. Automotive and services sector. Developments in autonomous vehicles will change the face of automotive industry within the next 10 years. Autonomous vehicles will lead to replacement of truck and taxi drivers in the not so distant future. Drones are taking center stage in the delivery of light goods, spraying of chemicals in agriculture, surveying, remote monitoring and security jobs in the services industry. These are the current jobs that we have. The bank tailors, loan officers, bartenders, call center agents, cashiers, fast food workers, security guards, receptionists, and drivers. The technology, robotics, drone technology, and autonomous vehicles. The jobs of the future. Drone delivery operators, automatic transport system managers, virtual teachers, time brokers, and weather modification police. Now, in Zimbabwe, you only go to the bank if you want to, or if you just don't want to move with technology. Information technology. Cloud, as cloud computing gathers momentum, internet threats will continue to proliferate. Jobs in information security consultants, cyber security protectors, web application developers, and cloud computing specialists will become more popular in the future. Application developers, we have network engineers, database administrators, security specialists, web developers, systems analysts, and computer technicians. The technologies, 
big data, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. The, the, the future jobs, ethical hackers, data scientists, data miners, cybersecurity engineers, cloud computing specialists, and memetic managers. The gape in manufacturing innovation. The government and universities currently are able to, they are doing basic technology research. Research to prove feasibility. Then the private sector is doing system test launch and operations and system sub, sub system or subsystem development. And we have a gap in technology development there, technology demonstration and a bit of technology development. So what are we doing when we say we want our people to be well-skilled? We want them to be able to demonstrate technology. We are saying we, now, we need now to start to create a critical mass that are able to demonstrate technology, to say uh, Epison has created that. I have created a Zim projector. So we need to fill that gap role of the future stigmatized university. Africa's future stigmatized universities who create research and development networks based on strategic linkages rather than on a narrow historical and linguistic bondages. So we want our universities, if it is the University of Science and Technology links with the Hong Kong University of Technology, they must be serious collaborations and links that will give us uh, benefits. Zimbabwe's future stigmatized universities will pursue higher impact research grounded on solid STEM disciplines to foster digitalized creativity and technological innovation. And the future stigmatized universities will graduate citizens with self-confidence to establish industries of the future while driving the country's industrialization agenda with passion. You know, Scholastica is a, as a Minister of Higher Education, Education, Science and Technology Development, we are happy to be associated with the Scholastica, especially being held at ZITF, uh, and the fact that they have included a STEM day in their Scholastic program makes us uh, very happy. Um, we are good to be involved with the Scholastica because it is a program that uh, uh, encourages debate among students from high school schools and our initiative the stem initiative is catering for that category of, of students so that we are able to catch them while they are young and prepare their foundation from an early pre-learning uh, platform until they get to university wow the presentation was such an insightful presentation because we got to learn that we are the future we are the ones to make a change in the future, in the upcoming future. Thus, there is much that we have to do as youth in the research and development that's coming up with economic development in our country. Well, I actually uh, learned that I should actually, I had an attitude towards mathematics, so I learned that I actually have to drop the attitude towards mathematics. I found that very challenging and actually realized that I can, I can actually tackle it, I can handle the pressure now. The students that are participating here are high school students, uh, selected among the schools uh, within and around Bulawayo. So these are the students that, that are here. And I presume it's not also limited to the students around Bulawayo alone. Everyone else who had a chance to come and attend here, I think they are attending. I like him when you said STEM is benefiting the students, like they are teaching us at high school and then they are taking us to university so that we become good citizens of the country, so that we come and work in our country to develop our community. I think that was, that was something that I could say I liked about STEM. Okay, basically what I want to do is I want to do marketing. So I need to first think that uh, before I choose to do marketing, I first have to think that uh, maybe in 10 or so more years to come, uh, the droppers and the drones will be doing everything. So I first need to think exactly what marketing is and how I, uh, uh, STEM can really can be applied into marketing. So. If you look at those four subjects, physics, chemistry, biology and mathematics, they create the basic foundation 
of every career that you can think of. And there was my future for this evening. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm Ruven Eko. That was Dr. Godfrey Gandawa, Deputy Minister, Higher and Tertiary Education, educating us on the jobs of the future, that we are entering a scientific age, and an age where we all have to be scientifically literate. And that is not something to take lightly. So hopefully we will move with the time and understand that the government is not just talking about STEM because it is supposedly a, a, a campaign that supports lower six students of today. It is a vision far greater than that. And it's up to you and me to embrace it and make the most of it. I'm Ruven Eko. That's it from me. Good night for now. Be good. And if you can't be good, be safe. Uti uzi zema.